Hey guys, we're back. Uh, we did some work on the 570 in the last video. We got uh, some parts in for bone crushers, stuff that we needed to replace. So now we're gonna put our focus on uh, getting this bike ready to ride again. Got a few little maintenance issues that need to be addressed. The first one is uh, we got the old floppy brake lever right to the bar. I don't know where or when or why, but at some point in time, we lost this caliper. So it doesn't uh, hold the seal, it doesn't hold oil. You can fill it up and she just goes soft. So we gotta fix that, cause you gotta be able to stop, apparently. <laughs> and then uh, another issue that we have is, uh, we got a little bit of wobblage here. So that's not normal. <laughs> and it's not just one side. It's all sides. This one's the worst. So that to me, doing a little Holmes and Watson sounds like a wheel bearing. So hopefully it is because that's what I ordered. <laughs> and then uh, the other thing that we have that's kind of a little bit more of a major project is uh, I blew a seal in the rear diff early in the season. Knew it was a problem and instead of dealing with the problem, we just continued to dump the oil and put new oil in every ride because didn't want to go down. So uh, we'll come over to the bench, I guess. So gonna be able to, I guess, give an honest review on these. I've heard some people say that all ball bearing, all balls bearings are not the greatest, but for the price, we're gonna try them. We'll see how they hold up. I mean, I know why those bearings are gone. <laughs> I, I live in two wheel drive. If I click it in four, we're going to the boards, so I I always abuse the rear end on it. I know that the Polaris front diffs can be slightly problematic, and a lot of guys are going to like the Razor diffs in the front. I'm not there. I'm not going that far at this point in time. So I like to just abuse the rear diff because I know that we can rebuild that. So we've got that. This is a brand new brake caliper with the high heat bronze pads. We're not using them. There's brand new ones on there. And then I've also got uh, All Balls Racing Complete Diff Rebuild Kit. So it's got all of our bearings, seals. Actually, it was a pretty good kit for the price. We're going to try this because I'm hoping to save going the route of rebuilding or buying yeah, an aftermarket diff. So yeah, we got all brand new seals, brand new bearings, one-way bearing. So we're, we're going to learn. <laughs> we're going to learn together. Yeah, we're going to learn together. We're going to learn the hard way. <laughs> typical misfit fashion. So, yeah. So that's where we're at. We're uh, going to set you guys up on a time lapse because you guys have already seen us blow this bike apart a hundred times because we do it every time we go somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to get this blown apart. And then once we get into what we're doing, we're going to uh, pull you guys out of the time lapse and we'll bring you back in. All right, so we've got the hubs out. We separated the rotor from the hub. We got the bull nose or the bull ring out. We're not gonna show you that trade secret. That's hush hush, keep that on the DL. <laughs> so now we got uh, our driver in. Make sure we don't exceed our flux capacitor's limit. And we're gonna push these things out, hopefully. Nope. to hold it and do the double take. There we go. Yep. Should settle in. 
Yep, so it needs some movement. Been there a while. Done. Oh yeah, she's, oh, yeah. she's cooked. She's cooked. <laughs> we did this last week to another 850. <laughs> so, yeah. We got that cleaned up. Got one more to press out. All right, so we got the, the old bearings pressed out. We're just taking an SOS pad, cleaning up the mating surfaces in here. Give them a little how you doing, the old WD. So that way we don't run into problems when we go to press these things back in here. Want them going nice and smooth. I think they needed to be changed for a little bit. <laughs> you think? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, anywho. Mm -hmm. But no, no, no. They've been places. Oh yeah. They, these bearings have taken me all the way from the mountains and well, when it, I bought it in Peace River, Alberta. So rode the mountains out in Peace River, through the valleys out there, all the way across the Canada pretty much to here. Every mud hole we could find. Like, uh, those bearings, they've, they've definitely been places they, and done things, they, that's they for sure. Bearings. I'm not, uh, I don't need the extended Can-Am warranty on these ones. They're good for that. They've had their time. I think I got, we were talking about, I think I'm close to like 4,000 kilometers on this bike in three years. And yeah, I don't think a single one of them has been easy. No. <laughs> so. All right, so we got everything all cleaned up. We're using the old bearing to help push it in because you don't want to put, you don't want to be pushing on the inner race. You want to push on the outer race so that way you don't risk damaging your bearings putting it in. So we got an eighth inch washer on top of the old bearing. And we'll just give her the how are you doing. Send her home. There is a lip on the inside, so once you get to that point where she takes weight, you know you're pretty much there. There you there. That's her. That's all the magic there is that are changing these bearings. I mean, you do need to have a press in order to do it. I mean, I've seen people online doing it another way, but it's, I highly don't recommend that. It, don't beat it in with a yeah, hammer. If you've got somebody who's got access to a press, just do it with a press. So then I'm just checking in here. There's a little line there. That's your seat line. We're all seated in. And then our bull nose, our bull ring goes back in here. So we'll do that. So we'll set up for another one. Might as well get them where we're going. I sprayed just a little bit of WD in here. Just a little bit of lube. You know what it's like trying to get her in dry every once in a while, right guys? <laughs> no one wants to go in bareback. No. So we're just a little bit of the, the old lube there. Line her up on top. Got our Jimmy Rig press assembly in here. Line that sucker up. Line up. And this is something you don't want to force, you want it just nice and easy. She starts to sit. And there she just goes. like that. Send her home. That's her. And just like that, it, it's not the, they do make proper tools for this kind of stuff, <laughs> but I mean, you got an old bearing, you got a washer, so why buy the tools? So yeah, just set, yeah, she's all seated in, seated in nice and flush. Those are pretty much rebuilt, ready to go in. We're not gonna be throwing them back in right now because might as well come over and discuss what's going on. So we already knew that, uh, like we were talking before, this front pinion bearing, it's got a bit of play in it, but I blew this prop shaft. I actually went through about three U-joints this season, and when I did, I lost material on the other prop shaft. It was out of balance. Being out of balance, I had vibrations, took this seal out and this bearing out. So we've been just basically babying in it. Every ride we go on, do a fluid change. But then when we got into it, we pulled everything apart. We also found out that I've got a bad U-joint in the front prop shaft. 
So I've got a, a spare U-joint from the old rear prop shaft, they're the same part number from front to back, they're interchangeable that way. So I'm going to try to press out one of the new U-joints that I put in the old prop shaft because that's literally just got one small ride with the trail stompers, uh, just the family day ride that we did with them. That's all it's got in it. So I'm really hoping that I can do that because I really don't want to have to replace the whole shaft. And I really don't feel like waiting another week or two to get uh, a new U-joint. So we're going to try that. And then our next task I'm is... Going for the diff next, aren't Yeah, we? so our next task is we're going to have to pull apart the belt box, pull the primary, secondary clutch, pull the prop shaft out, axles out, and then we need to remove the rear diff because we're going to do a complete rebuild on the rear diff. So that's kind of our next step. And then once we get to that, then we get these problems addressed and sorted. And we also found that at some point in time this season, <laughs> he lost the spring. I lost the spring and the exhaust needs to be tightened up. But I mean, that's, this is exactly why this time of year we blow the bikes apart. We ride hard. We know that this kind of stuff's it's inevitable no matter what we do no matter what brand yeah it doesn't matter you could have a can-am a yamaha a honda anything that you're gonna push the limits on mm. you got to expect that you're gonna have to be able to fix things and to be honest with you bearings bushings u-joints these are all wear wear points like this is stuff that no matter how you ride these are all designed to fail so that you do not take out your dip, you do not take out your transmission. Like, so no matter what you do, you can say, oh, I don't like my Polaris because I had to do bushings or I always got to do bearings. It's part of the game. <laughs> you're going to ride off road. You're going to push the limits. You're going to beat on your toys. You better have a good set of wrenches because <laughs> you're going to need them. All right, so that belt line off. One death out. Yeah. It's not that bad, but I know that it's it needs some love. It's time. Yep. We're gonna prop her up on the bench, and uh, Derek's gonna figure out what to tear apart or what to do. So, in the spirit of good ideas, we figured before we try to split the case, we might as well drain the oil, and we'll uh, see what kind of carnage comes out of this thing. I guarantee it's is it milk? It's milky. Done. That was purple. That is milky. We do have a catch basin, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, she's been leaking a bit. Well, look at the carnage on the magnet, though. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. There's yeah. foul play. It's all metal shavings. Yep. Hopefully the pinion's not gone. There's not, no, there's no clunk in it, so I'm not worried about the pinion being gone, but... <laughs> That's AGL. <laughs> what? Was, was it AGL? It's more of a cream dress. Yeah. Wow. And, but I mean, it's still... And look what's... Look, everything's still tight. Look what's playing in the background there. Yeah. Who's that handsome fella? Wearing the orange helmet? Not that one. <laughs> daddy <-o. laughs> Alright, yeah, so uh, I guess our next step was uh, getting this bracket off the pinion and figuring out how to split this casing without breaking it. Okay guys, so we've got the diff out like we showed you. We've got it split. It wasn't actually as bad as some of the videos I'd watched. What I did is I took two crescent wrenches and if you look there's a spot here, here and on the bottom. So what I did is I put the crescent wrench in on the, on the housing like this. And then just kind of rolled each other in them into each other and just kind of worked our way around slowly doing that. And then we got to the point where the seal had released and we're into the diff. So we're gonna, this bearing here has got some play. It needs to be uh, redone. The seals also need to be redone. But this one's not bad, but we got it open, we got it apart, we're gonna do them all. So now we just need to uh, release this other bearing from this seal and then keep carrying on. So we're slowly making our way. Neither me or Corey have ever done this before, but it's one of those things where we got the tools, we got the time, we might as well give it a try and see what we can figure out. 
All right, here we go again. We don't got the right tool for the job, but we're getting the job done. Nothing a piece of quarter inch plate steel and a two jaw puller can't accomplish. That's pretty much where we're at for that. The next one might be slightly more trickyish. We're gonna figure that out as we go here. Alrighty. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do on this one. Alright, so we're doing we rigged it again. Just when in doubt, just put more washers on it. There we go. And she's it. Just like that. Redneck ingenuity. That one's out. I clean that end up. I'm gonna press this side. This side's where we're gonna have the excitement. Because this side I don't have the ability to get in underneath it quite the same way. Alright, so we spent a second on the bench grinder and thin the jaws down a little bit, slide them in underneath. Now we think we've got it. This is all a matter of how you hold your tongue, I think. Alright, so we got that. Center that up. Get the old Blastmaster 5000 out. To the moon, baboon! <laughs> so what do we do? And that's how you take the bearings off with <laughs> Jimmy Rick tools. We, oh, oh, that, like, I can barely roll that. Like, she's tight. Uh -oh. Yeah. It was time. Oh yeah, they, they had better days. <laughs> I'll give them that. They, did, they served their purpose and they did their thing. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, no, that's, that's some farm boy ingenuity there. Ooh. We make do with what we got. <laughs> So now we'll get this all cleaned up. We got one more that's coming and I'm I'm hoping it's the this pinion one. It's where we, I think I got the most problem. But there's no way to press it from the back. So I'm really hoping that once this snap ring comes out, that this kind of just bloop, yeah. <laughs> comes right out. But I have a feeling that it might not, but we will find out when we get that far. <laughs> so round three of Rednecks for us. This is how we're using the press this. Bolt. So, so these bolts are head studs out of uh, 2004 um, Hemi 5.7. We got my two old axle bearings. <laughs> we then took the base plate for the press itself. So this is OEM usable. <laughs> And then we took this, I don't know, I think it's a 32 mil socket. And it's working. <laughs> oh, I'm when in doubt, redneck it out. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Trust me, we tried. Uh, we got it though. Well, that's how you take the pinion gear out. <laughs> yeah. We got lots of good stuff going on today, boys. Anyways, we'll get it cleaned up and Derek will explain when he's putting her back together. Yeah, hopefully a lot easier than taking it apart. <laughs> All right, so what we did is I got the seal driver here and we took the old bearing and we're just using that as our drive because yeah. it'll all fit over top. And that's that, that's one in. I will give Corey the uh, grace on using the old Baron. That was, uh, we are sitting here scratching our noodle and he's like, I'm, well, I'm not just, just a pretty noodle? face, boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> so now we'll flip it over, bring that back in, grab our other bearing from the kit. We got a few things we're not quite sure where they go yet. But That's got to be on that. that. One oh, bearing. I thought, and that O-ring. Mm -hmm. so we still got that one piece to come out, so yeah. hopefully. We still got some more exploring to do, so. <laughs> but I'll do this in a long time so you can see what we're. Yep. Actually, we could, uh, so we don't have to come down as far. Don't run out of stroke. Yeah, yeah should we get a keep going? Yeah, there she goes. There we go. 
that's her. That's where she stops. And just like that, brand new bearings. Pinion is rebuilt. Really not as big as a deal as I thought it no, was. No, like be. I really thought like what I seen online, like this was gonna be an absolute like barn burner of a project. Well that's that's exactly why it's been left till this point, is because we were like, mm, I don't want to get into the bike and tear it all apart and then not be able to put it back together. But man, that it's been so nice and free now. That was definitely part of the problem. So we've got that done, so now we're gonna figure out the next part of it. Next part of it will be hopefully not quite as tricky. We gotta pull the bull nose or the bull ring out, and then hopefully it slides out. But yeah, I don't. I, I know. see a little hole in here, and I think that's where that one-way bearing is, Could or that needle bearing is. Yeah, that's where. That's definitely where the play is coming from. But I think that was this damage was done because of the damage that I'd done to the prop shaft. Which I have here somewhere next to the broken axles. Uh, I don't know. Oh, right here. There it is. So this is the old prop shaft. And what happened is you can see when I blew the cap that we lost weight. Like a bunch of material was shaved off so that it was no longer balanced. So it was getting a whole bunch of vibration at high speed. And I'm pretty sure that that's what cooked that baron. I would bet on it. I would too. All right, guys, so we got it all back together. That half's in. We got the other half all cleaned up, ready to go. We got our RTV on it. We also got these shims. Um, pretty sure, not 100% sure, but about 88.9% sure that I said that the shims go on the non-pinion side. We're going to find out. It's either going to go or she's going to blow. <laughs> so we're going to go from there, and, and now I'm just going to put these shims in where they go. I have not put the seal in yet. Actually, I'm going to set these on here and try to make this work somehow. Prop this up a little bit, I think. So it sits a little more level. Now, line this up and over. Kind of like that. Now I'm going to place the bolts and I'm going to slowly go around and tighten all the bolts in. Haven't uh, got a torque spec on this yet, so. Is this a Derek Rucker Ducker? Uh, this one probably I have to put a little bit of the research in there, <laughs> just to be sure. Just don't want to do this again. All right, so we're just taking this down slowly by hand, doing the old crisscross applesauce method. So we got her seated and completed. I was going to use the impact, but then I decided that probably wasn't the greatest of my ideas. It's a little bit of old school once in a while. Yeah. Old age. It's that old timers thing, I think. Starting to get old and not want to backpedal. <laughs> Been an all day event just getting it out, getting it out, and rebuilt. And still really hoping those drums are on the right side. <laughs> Your confidence is not sky high. Right no. Like just over a 50% at this point in time. <laughs> but no, it's higher than that. I'm pretty sure that that's. That's out of the whole rebuild on this, that's the only thing that I'm not 100 on is that I picked the right side for the shims. But you can see the RVT skis, eh? Yeah. yeah. Keep walking her down. We're almost there. Alright guys, so we got the diff all completely assembled again. We've got everything tightened up. We've got we put some AGL in it and we've ran it and everything's tight, everything's right. I'm now hundred percent confident that we put the shims in the right place. 
So now we've got a rebuilt def ready for next year, which is awesome. So uh, yeah, we're gonna call it quits there for today. Tomorrow we're gonna get back at it. Tomorrow we're gonna get back, when we get back at it, we're gonna uh, replace the uh, U-joint and the prop shaft, address the exhaust issue. Belt cover. Yeah, clean up the belt cover. Basically get everything all back to cleaned up. And uh, yeah, and start the putting everything back together process and hopefully in the next day or two we'll have this buttoned up and... All right boys, so Derek's got the belt box back of the belt back box pulled. Uh, I'm gonna hit it with a wire wheel lightly, yep. get all the RVT out of here, get it nice and clean, and then we'll clean up the next, the second box, I guess? Yeah, yeah, the box and then the cover for the box. And I'll bring it back when we still have on both sides. Right. But usually the leak's in here. Yeah, somewhere. Right down there in that bottom corner is where there was no silicone from factory. So, and I know a few people have said that, you know, like this is an issue that they've had, and I thought I wasn't having it, and haha, -ha, jokes on me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and yeah. yeah, we'll be using RVT. Yeah, to put it back together. But he's right here. There's there's a little channel, helps it. Uh, I'll maybe put it in a spot. You can see it. And I'm just gonna. And that's with a brass, it's not a very abrasive so the, wheel. The groove. Yeah. So now you can see that groove. We're just gonna get that channel all cleaned out. It helps it seal better. And take your time doing this. This is yeah. not a rush job. Because if you miss a spot, she leaks again, you gotta do it all over again. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you don't wanna do that because then you're doing the same job two or three times. But uh, we gotta be very, very quiet because I done something that could get me in trouble with a uh, girlfriend. The uh, belt box, yeah, it's it's in the dishwasher right now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not scrubbing this thing clean. That's why we got a dishwasher. So yeah, we're, we're just waiting for the old dry cycle to be done and then we'll grab it out of the dishwasher and we'll get it bolted up. We'll bring you guys back when we get to that point. So while Corey's over there getting the housing all cleaned up, we're gonna come over here and uh, we're gonna Put another adjustment into this clutch. This has been an ongoing thing since we got it. We got the uh, Quad Shop Custom Clutch. And we've been playing with the weights. It wasn't quite set up the way I wanted it. We've got it close. I think this will hopefully be the final adjustment. So I'm gonna set you guys up here in a minute and you guys can uh, watch me while I change these uh, weights out. All right guys, so we got the top of the clutch off. It's six 10, meter, uh, 10 millimeter bolts. You just take your time and slowly bring them up evenly. It's really important to bring it up even so that way you don't cause any damage. So uh, now I'm just in here with this Quad Shop Customs. You got a different spring and then you also got the diff uh, adjustable dogs. So right now I'm just pulling the dog out. I've been in here probably, we've been in here what, three times now? Oh yeah. At least? At least. At yeah. least, yeah. yeah. So about three times now. Uh, it's a great clutch setup. I like it. Um, I don't think they quite understood what I said I do with my bike when I ordered it. Cause when they set it up, it was like with their suggested weights, it was not my suggested weight situation. And then we took it to the Massey mud bogs. And of course that's just straight line bogging. Bike wasn't set up for that. Bike's more set up for shooting skag, that kind of stuff, playing in some deep water. So we adjusted the weights to run through the Massey mud bogs, ran the Massey mud bogs, come home. Bike is not set up to run the trails anymore. I had to tear everything apart, set it up for the trails. So then I put it to where I thought was gonna be appropriate for the trails and it works great. It does what it wants, but I want just that little bit more tire speed. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna put we're gonna put some more weight in it. So the way these set up, excuse the dust on it. I still got to clean it up. From what my understanding is, and there's not a lot of information on the internet about this. So every every company is a little different. Polaris is this is the first. So this counterweight here, I'm not sure what that does. We got the most weight we can get in it. I believe it's bottom end, but I'm not 100% sure. 
If any of you guys out there know more about this than I do, please feel free to comment because I would love to know what I'm doing instead of shooting in the dark. So uh, from what I read, this is a quad shop custom thing. They add that in there. And I believe it's for bottom end, which is that mark there on the bottom of, or on the dog, that's where that wear mark is. But then they go 25, 50, 75, 100. And that's your throttle range on the CBT. So right now I've got as much weight as I can get for 25 and 50%. And then I have nothing in 75. And then I have a little bit of weight at 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the same weight as 25, 50, and 75. And then a small, and leave the small amount on the toe of the of the dog so that's going to give me more power for 25 50 75 and then a little bit at the high end because with the high lifter with it being gear reducted for the bigger tires the not something that high lifter does with them i don't think that i'm going to gain any more top end by changing the weight at the very toe at the 100 percent so but I do feel it though, like when I'm in the throttle, it wants to stand up and go to 50% and then there's a bit of lull in the power and then I can feel it kick back in. So that's why I'm gonna put more weight here at the 75. So that way I've got all my power up to 75% of throttle and then I'd say about 50% at the 100% mark. So I know that's a lot of percentage, a lot of jibber jabber. So I'm just gonna get the weights changed here, but I just thought I'd explain a little bit of it because I've looked and I can't find a whole lot of information. And the information I could find is for snowmobiles, which is similar because it's a CBT setup, but the power delivery is different. So hopefully some of that makes sense. And if any of you guys out there know any more information about this than I do, please, please feel free to comment because this is stuff that I'd like to know because this trial and error thing is getting a little frustrating. All right guys, we uh, kind of were getting to her and didn't film anything, but might as well give you guys a breakdown. So we've, uh, was in on the clutch. We've uh, adjusted the weights on that, hopefully never to touch that again. Because at this point in time, if I got to adjust weights again, I think I'm just gonna spend the money and buy an EPI clutch kit, which was what I originally ordered. But I, I ordered my clutch kit through Dirty Life and it was supposed to, I, they sent me an EPI clutch kit, but it ended up being for an 800 Ranger and they don't work, different. So then when I contacted them, the only thing that they had in stock was this Quad Shop Custom. I mean, so far so good, but the adjustability and not knowing what I'm adjusting is getting to be a bit of a headache. But anyways, we got the box all cleaned up. We've got black uh, RTV on the back. We've got that all sealed up and we've uh, deleted the uh, factory Polaris not watertight problem. And then we learned the hard way this summer, you don't use the black RTV on something that you plan on maybe ha possibly having to take off again, because it's not fun. So on the belt cover itself, we've got just the black silicone, because at least with the silicone, it doesn't hold and bond like the RTV does. So we found out the hard way, typical misfit fashion, that you use the silicone on something that you want to have to take off again. So yeah, that's where we're at. We've got the belt back on. We've also got the differential back in and bolted up. It's rebuilt, ready to go. So we're, uh, we're getting the back end all tied up here. We're gonna put the box back on. And then we kind of gotta let things sit for 24 hours and then- Okay guys, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a briefing here, I guess. Uh, we cut the work on uh, Bone Crusher a little short. We ran in now uh, that we needed some more parts. And, you know, it's same old, same old. We've You've seen us tear that bike down, put that bike back together. But uh, as you can see, yeah, the garage is looking a little empty. So uh, it's about to get a little bit emptier. This bike's uh, heading out today too. So uh, about a week ago on the Top Secret DL, We'd had some plans to uh, get our bikes wrapped. And uh, so yeah, Bone Crusher was the first one to get shipped out. That was the first rendering to come back. 
So I'd like to say a huge shout out to uh, Kevin Bishop at Chaos Graphics out of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. He came through clutch for us. We got some really wicked designs coming up. So uh, we're actually going to be shooting a video later today. We are going to pick Bone Crusher up and the 570 and Megatron are going to be getting loaded on the trailer. It's nice and bright and early in the morning. We've got the trailer hooked up to the truck. So yeah, oh, we got uh, dad painted the cap on the truck. So now we got a black cap on the truck instead of a red one. So yeah, so that's where we're at. Sorry that we kind of sold you guys short when uh, it come to putting Bone Crusher back together. But uh, you guys have seen that many times and I'm sure you'll see it many more times to go come. But uh, yeah, we had to, uh, we had to kind of get into crunch mode and we had to get it put back together so that way we could get it shipped off to Chaos Graphics. So yeah, I'm excited to see the wrap and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this video and we'll catch you on the next one.